Alright, tonight I am working on an Asden PCS 5000 2 meter amateur transceiver uh, that I picked up at a ham fest last spring. I've uh, been using the radio uh, in my truck without too much trouble until recently uh, the temperature started to get a little cold and uh, what I discovered was that the uh, the PL tone uh, generator was not working consistently. Um, so after doing a little troubleshooting what I discovered was there is a switch on the front which of course this is taken apart now but if you look at the front panel it's the leftmost switch. All that switch does is activate whether the PL tone is on or off. Um, you're able to program the PL tone and store it with a memory channel but this switch turns it on and off. I'm not exactly sure why you would really need that switch but it, nevertheless the switch is there. Um, so I found that that switch was starting to malfunction. I found that if I held the switch in the, the PL tone would turn on and, and everything would work fine but the colder the temperature the less likely it was to work without your finger on the switch. Um, therefore I decided to pull the front panel off which I've taken the top and bottom cover off the radio and taken the, the plastic bezel off and then this just uh, has a few screws you can see the, the mounting holes there pull those screws off and then this connects with these mezzanine type connectors and you just have to kind of wiggle it off and gently pry it with a screwdriver off of these headers and here is the the front panel. So the switch in question of course is this switch. Now the way these switches are, are laid out they're a little bit complicated mechanically and what I found was if I tip the switch towards me it sort of hinges out. I don't know how real visible it's going to be in the video here but within this white plastic housing there was a small little presumably like a beryllium copper type clip that was pressed into the plastic and what that did was it rode on a channel and either shorted or didn't short some of the metal contacts inside this switch housing um, and what I discovered was that that beryllium clip which is probably too small to see on the video which I've lost already here it is you can see this thing it was just sort of deformed and worn out so what I decided to do rather than try to fix the clip or you know reposition it figuring it would just deform again or it was just worn out anyway what I decided to do was simply short the, the back side of the circuit board because I either want the tone on and stored in memory or I won't have a tone programmed in so it's not uh, not a big deal and even if I am working simplex and I happen to leave the tone on um, I don't think it would be an issue so all I did if I get the light properly here was I shorted the middle contact the, the two middle contacts are shorted horizontally and the top two contacts are connected to that plane which is presumably some uh, tied to the, the ground shield net um, but anyway I shorted the two together with a piece of wire you can see the the wire was a little long initially and it melted the, the solder mask a bit but anyway I just shorted those two pins and uh, clipped back the wire and now I'm going to reinstall this and hopefully I will all have PL tone reliably uh, when I need it. Okay, so I got the front panel back in and now I'm going to uh, put the screws in. Here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six I believe. And uh, listening to the guys on 3875 
argue about the election results and some guy who's come in without a call sign. So that's that's what's going around in the background here. So while I uh, put these screws in, we'll see what these guys uh, can manage to come up with. All right. So got the. Uh, Got the uh, front front panel circuit board mounted, and now I've put the bezel back in, and there's just the usual four screws here to hold it on. Um, so I'm going to put those on, and then uh, and then put the uh, the top and bottom covers on, and put the knobs back on, and then we'll uh, we'll fire it up and see if everything works. All right, so I've got everything back together here more or less and one of the side effects of doing this job is that the memory ends up getting reset so for a simple test I am going to punch in a local repeater frequency in the VFO mode so let's see seven zero 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 enter okay now I am going to turn on the proper offset. Oops, right there. Positive offset. And we're going to try keying up. Now, without a tone programmed in the memory, nothing should uh, happen. Okay. Now I'm going to program a tone in. And with this radio, you, you sort of have to have a chart for the uh, the proper tones. Um, I just happen to know this one off the top of my head. I know that if I punch in one, nine, and then hit the tone right key or a priority key, that will put in the proper tone for this repeater, which is 127.6. So now we're going to go ahead and see if it will key up. And there it is. Now we can push this tone button however we want. It doesn't stay engaged at all anymore. And uh, it should still key up the repeater. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to ID on the repeater to let everyone know that that was me. And then uh, go ahead and put this radio back in my truck.